Welcome once again to The Breakfast. And now let's go to Off the Press, where we have a review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. I'm going to be starting with uh, stories from the Daily Sun and sharing with you as many of them as possible. Should be on your screen in just a few seconds. And also, we'll be introducing our guest. Yes, it says there, COVID-19, 30 die in seven days in Lagos. Songo Lu uh, flashes a red flag, says state recording six deaths at isolation centers daily. 4,300 confirmed cases in July. We're yet to see the worst of the pandemic, says the federal government. Also, Delta variant cases hit, hit uh, 32. Hush Papi Saga, DCP Tunji Disu replaces Abakiari as IRT boss. Still on the Daily Sun, hunger in the land worsens. Nigerians groan as prices of foodstuff uh, soar. And NNPC lists uh, conditions for oil uh, majors' uh, divestment. Uh, DSS also fails to produce four out of 12 detained Igbo's aides in court. Still on the Daily Sun, Oshun Oshogbo festivals begin with traditional cleansing. Um, we can also find here Anambra Umez Committee can't unite Abga. And uh, Uguayi to meet Inugu-born aircraft inventor, swears in 68 development center administrators. Doctor strike bites hard. Hospitals discharge patients. NMA seeks withdrawal of controversial circular on scheme of service. And those are the big ones that we can share on the Daily Sun this morning. Turning now to the Nation newspaper, the headline reads, Oshimbajo's team working on ways out of APC's legal ditch. Why last-minute attempts to postpone ward congresses were stalled? Varsities get varsities to get 30 billion naira next week. Government and ASU meets. APC PDP rejects Jagas' call for third force. Says it's time for alternative. Lawyer Igboho awaiting action on asylum application. Back in day tips seven commissioners. Disu takes over from Kiari at IRT. Truck kills mom, baby, other in Ugo. Resident doctor strike takes toll on patients at hospitals. Stringent COVID-19 measures likely. NNPC to safeguard investment with conditions for IOC's divestment. Canvas firm stable in custody. Lastly, JAM, NUC, UBEC, others get acting CEO. All right, to the Nigerian Tribune this morning. COVID-19, Lagos, or your FCT, and four others on red alert as a third wave rages. 4.09 million Moderna vaccines donated by the U.S. awaiting a efficacy test by NAVDAQ. Don't take Moderna if you've taken AstraZeneca, Songwo Lu warns. And also federal government puts enforcement committee in places at airports. Controversy in education agencies as, a ten, uh, as tenure for Louis de Rashid, 15 others end. We can also find here patients and relatives lament as resident doctor's strike takes toll on hospitals nationwide. Lagos Free Zone, U.S. mission to, in uh, Nigeria to facilitate increased investment. Disu replaces Kiari as intelligence response team head. And uh, also um, aggrieved APC stakeholders set for showdown as governor's ministers hijack structures. Reject APC and PDP in 2023, Jagat tells Nigerians. APC, Buhari failed Nigerians, says PDP. And also, don't, hump, uh, don't lump us with PDP, APC replies ex INEC boss. All right, those are the ones on the Nigerian Tribune. Um, on The Guardian, after $75 billion investment in 20 years, telecom services still struggling. Federal government confirms third wave of COVID-19 amid doctor strike. For sanity to prevail in Ladipo market. Federal government gives conditions for deployment of Moderna vaccines as Nigeria gets 4 million doses. Oshimbajo APC governors, ministers seek safe option after Supreme Court's ruling on caretaker chairman. No going back on indefinite strike, resident doctors vow. Federal government lists conditions for oil majors investments from upstream operations. All right, and I think we can just quickly throw in a few on the punch uh, this morning. Uh, we can see a rise in COVID-19 cases, NESG, LCCI, fear fresh lockdown, federal government plans tough actions against third wave. Another lockdown will shrink government revenues, affect private sector and citizens. Also, Songwulu cries out over daily COVID-19 deaths, 
It says red zone travelers abscond. Nigeria takes delivery of 4 million Moderna vaccine doses from the United States. DSS keeps four Igbo aides, produces eight assaults journalists in court. Also this morning on the punch, community leader puts recovered bodies at 43 in Plateau clashes. PDP youth leader arrested for attacking Buhari and SGF on Facebook jailed for one year. Driver flees as truck crashes into Ogun building, kills women, daughter and motorcyclist. And um, also, Sarakis EFCC inv invitation to Scott Ullis 2023 presidential bid, says uh, Yakasai. Lawyers fear assassination plot against Igboho pursue asylum. And also, $2.4 million ransom paid for kidnapped students uh, release in 2020. Buni says Obas Osh Oshimbajo governors begin talks as fear grips APC. And of course, uh, government hospitals grounded as resident doctors begin strike. That's the last on the punch this morning. All right. I think uh, those are the ones we can look at. Uh, Mr. Wandu Chris, good morning. Publisher of CKN News. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Uh, across the papers, a common story we saw was the um, one about the resident doctor strike and uh, vowing that the government must fulfill the 10-year uh, memorandum of action until they call it off. I spoke to the president of the ARG at Luth yesterday, still saying the same thing, that this is a decision taken by the National Executive Council in Abia State, that they must strike until they get what they deserve. And, you know, when he went on to list some of these things, you know, to give a rationale for the strike, he mentioned that many doctors who have died in service during COVID-19 have not been paid anything. I think it was called a death in service uh, allowance or something like that. They are clamoring for a review of the 5,000 Naira COVID-19 um, hazard allowance. Um, some resident doctors have been owed salaries um, for months now. And, you know, so many others. I don't know really how you see this because this is something we've been talking about for, you know, year after year. And it seems that um, we're seeing some sort of insincerity from the government. Or how do you see it? Yes, it's quite unfortunate um, because uh, look at it. Um, Coming at this time when we are having rights in, uh, in COVID is very worrisome. One of the uh, paper uh, um, headline was that um, um, about 30 Nigerians died in Lagos within one days in Lagos, and that is in Lagos. Um, that is worrisome. And uh, we still have uh, even totally uh, forgotten the fact that uh, COVID-19 COVID is bad or uh, is still long, especially the data. Very, which is a much better, a much uh, one that is reaching all that's of the world. But uh, at this time, I know um, some of the issues, uh, one of the issues that was raised by the res resident doctors uh, was the uh, Sakula, or direct of Lagos State Gov, Lagos State Gov, on um, the allowances paid to, I think, uh, youth call members um, that are doctors and the rest, uh, and the rest of it. Uh, but we should have been able to be able to be proactive in this. This is not the time for the rest of us to, or doctors or whichever one at any level we should go on strike because we have serious uh, um, health uh, emergency in Nigeria. Not just COVID, not also forget that um, cholera is reaching across Nigeria. And over the last count, I think we had a 500 and something or close to 600 have died from cholera also in Nigeria. So um, the federal government should quickly uh, meet with the resident doctors. And, uh, but my, uh, my issue is that mm -hmm. that seems to be the only lamp that the government understands. When some of um, um, associations raise issues um, concerning their members, the federal government is not proactive. It happened with ASU. ASU is also true. Uh, just that ASU tried to now. The government just came out um, with a press release, if you can see the headlines, and said that they're going to release 30 billion naira to ASU. Probably that was because of the fact that ASU uh, are ready to go on strike. Why was that money not released? Or the, like, must they wait for ASU to go to strengthen to go on strike uh, before they do that? The same thing happened with the uh, Polytechnic uh, lectures. Same. And for a long time, we were like, uh, before our government uh, agreed uh, to pay certain money. So this is the way to go. But um, that is the last option that associations have come to learn. It's, it's only when you are like, 
that the government will lead. And that for me is not good enough. So, Mr. Nwandu, yes, we do get your stance, but is there any way to rationalize um, this trend we've seen where, you know, first of all, associations give an ultimatum and the government seemed to do nothing during the, all that time. For NAD, they said they gave a 113 days ultimatum. Nothing was done about it. So that first trend of the government, you know, seeming inaction you know, during the period of ultimatum. And secondly, um, that also common th um, trend of the government signing MOU, signing MOAs, and then not doing anything about it. It shows the insincerity on the part of government. And as I said, um, that seems to be the only language I understand. It is only when an association is trying to go on strike that you see the government uh, try to um, bring them to the round table to discuss and stop them. If they issued over, um, over 100 day um, uh, notice about going on strike and they didn't do anything only for them to begin strike and not talking and rest of them, it brings to question the kind of leaders that we have. And let us even put it be, let us put the heads at it. Well. The Minister of Law, Labour, is a dog. Then we also have the Minister for Health. We have Minister of State for Health. All of them are doctors. So how will be there? And they will not be able to discuss issues, get issues resolved before the doctors. When two elephants find the grass that suffers, this, those sources are, is are, Niger, are Niger, the poor Nigerians. If anything happens to any Nigerian and it goes to the hospital, definitely can. There are instances where people will die. People get involved in accidents. That their relatives are not around there. The line of contact is quickly to rush them to the government hospitals and for them uh, to be treated. Some of them will die because nobody will treat them. So those are the part of the, the problem we have. And um, and it has been like year in, year out, year in, year out. That has been the situation we find ourselves. And it's quite unfortunate that we have that this kind of leadership that all they listen to is just themselves, they don't listen to others. A, a, a minister was saying the other time that any doctor that wants to travel can go out and rest up. Then we have more than enough. So we we'll even say that they can go into family and other. That is the kind of how many doctors do we have in the country in the country of about two over two hundred million. Go and look at the ratio, whether we have the ratio standard right. when it comes to health. Wando. But it's quite unfortunate. All right, uh, we're going to come back to health, you know, but let's move to security um, and the controversy concerning uh, Abakiari. Uh, there is uh, news, of course, that uh, Tunji Disu, the former head of the Rapid Response Squad here in Lagos, has been appointed um, as a replacement for Abakiari and, of course, uh, now heading the um, IRT. Um, what's your response to that? Well, I've always said that um, with police force, we still have so many credible and young, uh, vibrant, uh, good driven officers. And um, yes, Abakari has done well. We, but with the police force, we still have very vibrant uh, officers. Tunji Disu, you know very well. Uh, there's another guy, Frank Mbad, the guy that's in, uh, the spokesperson of the, of the police. Wonderful guy. I've known Tunji Disu for over three decades. We are classmates at Lagos State University. I've known him for over 30 years. I know his character. I know his person. He's very, very powerful. And I said it to yourself when you analyzed in, um, uh, when he was um, in the IRS. You saw what the IRS was. Yes. And the way he, he went about his duty. Not current IRS we have. Uh, the seems to have fallen out. But he is somebody that does it. Uh, job diligently. And he doesn't make noise. You see him talking an uh, hour. Uh, and do certain things. He's a fantastic officer. He has served in a war. Uh, he has served uh, as head of uh, as in um, a Then also uh, before coming to uh, and the way he, the way he lies, uh, the the system in God. Before he came, there were security challenges in God, including incessant arm robbery of banks. If you remember very well, you will see those arm robbery, BIO, to all parts of Lagos. Uh, but he was able to match his strategy and able to meet him. So he was posted to, uh, before he took up, he was uh, appointed, recent now. Don't forget, he was, he was moved to the uh, uh, police headquarters in Abuja, where he was deputy um, commissioner in charge of operations. If you know operations means the force, then you know that this is a, 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 a round peg in a round hole. I believe we'll be able to deliver and they'll be able to step into the 
shows that is led by um, 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 Abake. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do, be able to take up um, from where Bakari um, uh, uh, stopped. But more importantly, also want to say that issue of Abakari and the case is quickly disposed of. Um, so that we know where he stands. This is a fighter who has worked on very, very well. Even though what has just happened, it's just unfortunate. But within his tenure at not a, as a head of IRT of Nigerian police, even his day at um, SARS in Lagos, he worked it pretty well. But it's just one of the things. And All right, so Mr. happened that he find himself in this decision. Okay, but Mr. let's look for the investigation uh, mm -hmm. panel set up by the IG and for them to come out with their result. Okay, Mr. Wandu. When we also look at security matters, we see on the Punch newspaper the story about DSS uh, keeping four of Ibohu's aides and producing eight and also assaulting journalists in court. I don't know if you saw snippets of that video yesterday. And uh, there was also a slight confusion in the court when, you know, the aides that were produced, uh, the names of those aides were different from the ones that were arrested. This was something that the court pointed out to say there's a bit of discrepancy in there. And the court even went on to call them names, so to speak, saying that this just reeks of, you know, negligence in the DSS. Um, how do you um, comment regarding this story? First and foremost, I'm very much um, interested in the and enriched. What is enriched by the way DS is going about their job? I don't know why they, we are in court to present suspects. That is their own job. The job of a journalist, our job, is to report the proceeding. Why would DSS be stopping journalists from um, 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 reporting and stopping them from issuing the court? Um, the, the, uh, uh, the chairman of FCA. Um, yesterday, issued a press statement where he, the, 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 the NUJ condemned uh, the activities uh, of DSS. I don't know the kind of officers that have in the force these days. These are guys that are just taking the laws into their They don't obey the laws. They don't, um, they don't do the right thing. Journalists, you want to carry attack. What is wrong? What is wrong in the is doing this? Is there anything that that is wrong? It's not for them to report. To come to report, it is even no credit that they are there to report. So I was shocked by what I saw. Some of the people that we saw, and some of our um, our members were, um, were <laughs> I, I don't even know put it. But I think the hierarchy of the uh, DSS um, should call their their officers or their boys to order. This is not how to go about it. This is not how to <laughs> do things. You just take the laws into your hand you are working with this. doesn't mean that you are both the law. They are Nigerians. Journalists are also Nigerians. And all of us have interest. It is our duty as journalists to reverse the proceedings and report to Nigeria. Have every 200, 200 million Nigerians can be at the court at the same time. So, we Mr. Mr. Wandru, so also... They are just few, but who are there to report what happened. And okay. to do their job. So, Mr. Wandru, yeah, aside the... the... the and talk, then, I think the court can handle that. Um, don't forget that the initial SS came out and said they were 12. Now, the initial, they brought four. This time around, they brought eight. What happened to the other, uh, other suspects as well? But um, within the next few days, we'll see how it was. And but, how court, you know, but court. isn't this like a you know, constant disregard for the court? You know, and, and it, it feels like the DSS continues to disrespect you know, the, the ranking of the judiciary you know, every time that they fail to bring a suspect to court. Same thing happened with uh, Namdekanu. Um, and now also, you're bringing people whose names don't comply with those who were arrested. You're bringing eight instead of 12. Um, and it, it feels like they've continued to disregard the authorities of the court and disregard everything that has to do, do with the judiciary because they do as they like and then they, they, the, the case is uh, adjourned and then you know, they take their time and just continue to drag the case for that long. Why do you think this is happening and why do you think there's this constant disregard for the Nigerian court? It brings us back to what I said initially, the issue of leadership. DSS have less the primary responsibilities, which is to uh, make the, to maintain a high level of security within the country. They are the spy agents that you should know. They are to be heard. No, they are not able to hear. They are not able to be seen. They, they despite what DSS and SSS used to be. You don't see SSS and DSS uh, cameras and the rest of that. You do. This is a, a secret agent that we are so revered and feared in the past. Now you see them wearing their shirts, DSS, we are going everywhere. At parties, you see them um, following the, 
VIPs and the rest of them. And that is not the water hub of DSS, the SSS and DSS that we know. The DSS is a very secretive exit that goes down, do a lot of investigation, and come out with results. You don't see them. But these days, you say we also bravado around their carry-ons that that is not the DSS. So I think they should go back to what they are supposed to do. Right. That, for me, is to be... There is a Expect the DSS to assist their police, Naya Namia, to be to fish out most of these bandits that are going at and picking up at the rest of them. I'm not going to try to do uh, Mr. Wandu, it seems we're losing you there. We said we are going to arrest the judges, arrest the enforcement. So, how do you expect them to read the court? I think the judge should call them to know that. And just know that they are just staying up. The, the primary responsibility of the is not what they are doing. That responsibility of bringing them and bringing them so that they can attack or be the primary responsibility of the police, not of the DSS. All right. DSS has not been there. And they should respect um, themselves. Well, the time we have left, quickly also speak on uh, Atahiro Jaga saying that uh, Nigerians should reject the APC and the PDP. Um, in the next elections, and of course the APC is saying don't you know, rope us in the same, you know, or tie us with the same rope with the PDP. This isn't that done. We cannot do it with PDP, we cannot do it with PDP. That's the problem with us. In every color of the world, we have dumb parts. In a few, you have concert plan. In a few, you, you, you know you have the uh, Democrats. Uh, and other other people. So it is this way across the only thing we can see that shy that we this thing that is going to shy by and just Nigeria is trying their family to do it. But how can we put it when the new things must not be approved? It's not the then not the panel with the PDP is not the panel with it. To be able to present this and make to the next, or to be able to give for independent and and that is what some of them craving for independent leaders who need any political party. My brother, if you feel that you you are poor enough and you want to contest, you just go to India, get your work for you. But if you know it is to go to London, how much you pay to 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 canvas for both that that's an issue. So um, it will be a tall. Uh, a tall order, the former uh, chairman of INEX uh, said, uh, but I don't see that happening. Nigerians will always be either APC or PDP. Until we get to a point where we think that we are politically lighted enough to know the difference and the reason for, uh, for, reason for us to also alternative uh, politicians and then it will continue to be the way. It's just unfortunate. Don't forget the other people, the people that are around uh, and also now going around the country and Governizing according to the that will be contested in 2023. That is a President Buhari <laughs> tried it for about five times before he got the president. I don't think that that was just let it go. Okay, so still what's still talking about 2023. There's a story on the Daily Independent that says 2023 presidency, Tinubu to make position known after APC convention. And uh, they went on to say that the Boni led caretaker committee can be distracted. Um, the talk and clamor for a Tinubu presidency has been on for a while, and we're having, you know, well, yet to see um, um, Tinubu come out to say something. But the APC here is saying that after the, conven the uh, convention, we'll get clarity on whether or not he'll be um, running for president in 2023. But when we look at the internal crisis facing the party right now, the world congresses and all of that, do you think that the APC is a party that Nigerians have confidence to, you know, put their votes in? Every Nigerian has the right to ask for the highest office in the land, both you and myself. So, uh, is Tunipus, uh, if he wants to contest, is this a contest? So, uh, is that for his party to nominate him and also for Nigerians to vote for him? But my challenge here is the impunity going on um, in the AT. Um, if you look at the court, the Supreme Court judgment um, on that Akira Dulu uh, case, it was four to three. Uh, for accredited law. And the Supreme Court uh, judges made a statement that if the interim chairman of APC, Bruni, was added in that case, that APC would have lost that. What it means that, what they said to me was that the continued existence of that, of the APC caretaker chairman is wrong. 
and it's unconstitutional. It was stated that no, uh, no person can hold the office of be the governor of a state as also the office of national chairman of a party. And that is why uh, you, you saw that what Oshimba you tried to do, where he tried to make sure that they, 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 they postpone the, the congresses across Nigeria. But the AGF, Ambuni, uh, who seems to be the hawk in the party, said no, they should go ahead and give us all that the APC should be very, very careful. If they don't take their time, you'll be shocked that what happened is Zafara, Rivers, and some other states. That, um, also in Bayesa, we had lost uh, elections for due to internal crisis. Will be a child play when the big picture comes out. The, right. uh, other parties are talking down and watch what is going on. And if this situation is not handled properly, uh, there will be serious trouble. That is why I think um, Shimbajo, the president, who is the country now, and other top members um, of that party should come in that and do the needful. Else, APC will be in serious trouble come 2020. All right. Uh, Chris Wanda, thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, beautiful Tuesday, and thanks for your analysis. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you always. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a nice day. Absolutely. Time for Today in History. After the break, I'm going to the year 1975 to tell you about the third war's air crash in history. And, of course, I'll be going back to 1949 to talk uh, about the NBA, for those who, of course, are celebrating Nigeria's uh, and the Tigers and the Tigresses uh, this period. We'll talk about the NBA and how it started. <laughs>